Hello right guys, it's Jade. Welcome to a Last Oasis guide. I'm going to be giving you pretty much a beginner's guide to the game. Last Oasis is a hardcore survival game, but that doesn't mean developers haven't thought about giving you a helping hand. Basically, follow the tutorials. It's pretty much common sense, but complete new objectives by pressing F3 and checking on what you need, and you'll sail through the early stages no problem. I'm going to add to that some little tips along the way and also talk about some other stuff you may need to be prepared for as you start opening up the game a little bit more. So let's go. Don't forget to like the video if you find it useful. If you want to come join my clan, hit me up in my Discord and go and follow the relevant information in pinned messages. Last Oasis Starter Guide. You start out life in one of the cradle starter zones. This doesn't mean you're not going to get shanked. PvP is still enabled the minute you spawn, but a lot of players will be just focusing on getting through the stages so they can unlock their first walker and get off this first server onto some more of the bigger, harder oases and really start getting the game going. Do not just rely on cactuses to eat to replenish your water. Make sure you're putting it all in the fire pot and cooking it up as best you can. Even if it takes a bit of extra time, you'll thank me later. This will save you having to go out there and just carry hundreds of the cactus. Absolutely make sure you convert it using the fire. Them little orange things you see, the little pinky creatures, you want to kill them as often as possible. They're the only creature that really gives you hide in the game at the very early stages until we get to another oasis. Now, if you're worried about getting a shat on the minute you spawn, well, Donkey Kong have solved that problem a little bit. Whenever you spawn, they'll spawn the next player on the adjacent spawn point. And as you can see from my crewmates that also spawned, we all ended up spawning in a circle. So these are all the spots that you can spawn on the very first cradle maps. Here's some of the key things you need to focus on in the early stages. Making sure you complete the missions. This will get you experience and it's going to unlock the fragments. Fragments are your friend. It's the way that you're going to buy all the blueprints and unlock better armor, weapons and walkers. You earn fragments each time you level up. You'd also collect them from dead bodies, rupees occasionally, as well as loot and chests. So whenever you get the chance, make sure you're stocking up on your fragments, but utilize them as soon as possible. These can be stolen by other players. I really wouldn't stick around the first starting zones, but don't go too far into the desert where there's no resources around you. You want to have lots of wood, lots of obviously bush where you get the fiber, and lots of stones. You're going to need to pick up lots of loose stones, in fact, and you'll often find these around wreckages. Whenever you see a wreckage anywhere in the distance, go and investigate it. Alongside the stones, you'll also find a bunch of resources like weapons and tools, as well as the power fragments you need to unlock blueprints. These will all be in a chest that you need to attack with your axe. Here we've got the bag that obviously opens up quickly. You can see we've got fragments in it as well as some bits and bobs and tools. And then obviously don't forget to hack away at this chest. There's a variety of different containers. You'd also find barrels like these in the wreckage in the middle of the map. The tutorial will guide you through the Rupo little hut here. You're inside you'll find urns and this is where you can also get some extra loot too. Some of the ones that are on legs can be a bit hard to get to, but ones on the ground are obviously super easy and here are some of the urns. Now that is part of a starter mission, so wait until that pops up before you start going raiding loads of these. Don't ignore these little bits of wreckage as well. Like I did, you'll often find a skeleton underneath it and this is another point that you can loot and get more stuff from. Space is an absolute premium, so there's one thing I'd recommend you unlock as soon as you can after going through some of the tutorial items, and that is the storage pouch. Equipping it in one of your two equipment slots, obviously the other one being for your water jar, and you'll open up another five slots. This can hold lots of things like fiber and cactus and pelts. While it doesn't hold absolutely everything or any item, it can hold a bunch of stuff that reduces more of your weight, or at least helps it free up some space for other items. Alongside the reduced slots, you do have to worry about weight. So if you're going out there just getting all wood, it is gonna weigh you down and you will find yourself running out of stamina a lot quicker but it doesn't ever stop you completely from being able to move. There's quite a few varieties of the Rupu around. Some of them are going to be a lot harder than others. If they've got any sort of armor or headgear on or weapons, be careful. It could be a Sentinel or one of the Hazarakai. These are pretty formidable opponents early on, especially if you haven't got a lot of points put into your health. And that's another thing I recommend. Pump your points into your health recovery. It basically increases the health recovery and how long it takes you to get your red bar all the way up to the top. 
Sometimes it's only talking about minuscule 0.0, but it really does help. I think it's one of the more important things. Other than that, of course, making sure that your melee or your damage output is strong. They're the two skills I'd put the most points into. The Rupus themselves, again, don't go around killing too many, although they do have loot. There is another quest that comes towards the end of the tutorial, and this involves you killing 10 of them. So wait till then before you go out there. The rest of it, you can pretty much just go and rob a lot of these urns, a lot of the loot chests without killing too many. Any creatures wait until that quest pops up things are really super easy if you're in a clan or even if you're just playing with one friend you can actually share the missions particularly when you get to the one that has the fire flyer walker now everyone's pretty much going to want to craft their own and complete this mission however if you work together and gather all the resources and build just one of them the minute you pilot the Firefly, you will gain the mission as completed. So that means you don't have to waste resources making another one. If, especially if there's two players, you can pretty much get by going on one walker for a little while until you get the next upgrade, which is really meant to support two players, which is the dinghy. This works with a lot of the other missions as well. So if you've got a friend joining you maybe a little bit late behind, like I've got King Stack here, you can pretty much drop tools and weapons like the ax, he needs to hold it or craft and get a tree. Well, you can do that just by dropping one and him picking it up. If he needs to chop down a tree, you can do that by just dropping some wood for him to pick up. Equally, the same thing with the power fragments. If they manage to miss out on some of these missions, you can share all of the missions together, more or less. It does mean, though, that some of your friends might not have some of the blueprints unlocked, but it means they can store up their fragments and work on some of the other different blueprints. So this is really important if you're quite a small tribe. There's no doubt about it that combat can take some time to get used to. I often rely on brute force power and getting the first hit in. If you hit clunky wood, i.e. they block it, then you're going to need to make sure you defend. Like I said, I'm not the best at this. I'm still getting used to the mouse and keyboard controls of it, but it's definitely worth persevering. And as soon as you start getting some better weapons, you'll soon become a pro at taking out these monkey chimp men. Be warned though, if you haven't pumped your points into health, that even the sentinels will two shot you and you'll be down. But it's not the end of the world. As long as you're downed only once, you'll have a chance to get up, although it does take a couple of minutes. And then if you're not down within 180 seconds, you will die. So be a little bit more careful then. This also applies to jumping from great heights. If you're somewhere you need to get to and you haven't got your hook repaired yet, go ahead and just jump off the cliff. Yes, you will be downed, but as long as you've got some bandages to heal yourself up, it shouldn't be an issue. You do have to wait until your red bar has gone completely fully red before you can keep using bandages. On average, it's going to take a good couple of minutes sometimes to replenish your health. But that's why putting points into your health goes a long way. It means you're going to heal up a lot quicker. So there are five tech trees and obviously this is how you unlock your walkers. Once you've done the firefly, the next walker in line is going to be the dinghy. And this is the bigger one that supports two players. Although you can ride multiple players on a small firefly, it just doesn't allow enough spaces or respawns. The dinghy does give you a hell of a lot more space, but there are some things with this. When the missions early on ask you to make a dinghy, don't get rid of your firefly straight away though. Because as soon as you've made your dinghy, it then says you need to do some things things like placeables on your firefly. I made a big mistake and I demolished my firefly so I'd get some resources to finish off my dinghy and then I had to remake my firefly all over again. So don't do what I do. Keep your firefly until you've got the missions marked out where you have to put water bags on it as well as some other bits and bobs to finish it off like add modules to it. Don't forget also to make the dinghy, you're also going to need to unlock one of the vitamins and the vitamin you need is the vision potion. This is what you have to craft before you can make the next dinghy. It requires the cactus fruits which you find hanging from the large big cactuses in and around the desert. Let's not forget, Last Oasis is a PvP based game. When you come across another player, you of course can try and help each other out and grow forge partnerships. But in my instance, I already had enough rat bags clanning around with us. So we pretty much go and do what you gotta do. Attack other players, jump on top of their walker, hit them. If you get that first hit while they're still driving, you pretty much got a good chance of knocking them out. If you kill them straight away, they have a chance to respawn almost straight away. However, if you let them crawl around for a little bit, it'll be up to them, otherwise they have to wait two minutes. As I said, you can take their fragments of power from them. So whenever you've got anything specifically valuable, make sure you put it in the hold of your firewalker. Don't often forget as well, they will respawn if they really want to try and fight you off, but they won't have any of their weapons or their armor pieces. 
Don't worry, I'm not just going to use an example of me and three of my boys attacking one player as that full example. Here's me getting shanked by one single player and him absolutely ruining me. You'll notice that once he killed me, he went and started attacking my storage chest that you can build. You can put stuff on your walker. It is a bit limited in space, but you're surprising how much. I've got a water bag, I've got my stove, and I have got that storage chest. The storage chests are pretty easy to break into. You can break into it with a small axe. Likewise, you can break into your fire cauldrons too. What you can't break into with just basic weapons is your walker's storage. Here you can see the enemy player hacking away. There is two bars when you're trying to break into something. There'll be a green bar underneath the general health of the item. If the general health of the item goes that's it it's completely destroyed if the green bar goes that pretty much means it's unlocked you can repair it with a repair hammer and it doesn't cost any resources to repair it but you do use up your repair hammer and normally to repair something over halfway it's going to use up a whole repair hammer so bottom line, put absolutely the most valuable resources, which in the start in early parts of the game are, for me, pelts, lots of wood, and also making sure any of your knowledge fragments, your knowledge power stones are always in your walker's body. You can upgrade pretty much every single walker as well to hold more items by increasing its weight modules or finding modules I should say that add extra weight capabilities to it. So make sure you go through the upgrading process with your walkers. I'm not going to go through it because it does teach you in the tutorial. This isn't to show you how to suck an egg. This is just some tips and advice I've learned in the early stages. It is a harsh world out there and you can get attacked at any point. One of the best things about Last Oasis of course is that you don't have to worry about your base getting offline raided but you could easily get attacked very quickly. Take a look at this. At first I thought it was a bit of a glitch, but it turns out it's a high level player who's accessed some certain upgrades to his grapple hook and has a lot of stamina. And that's how he was able to get hold of me very quickly. I was pretty inexperienced during the early alpha. I really not had that much time with the game and he absolutely owned me. Better sword, better weapons, but I nearly had him, I nearly had him. Sadly, you can't shake players off. So even if you've got someone there, don't think you can rely on knocking them off on a tree or anything. The only way maybe to do that is by going off a cliff. It's really harsh. It feels like that sometimes, but don't rely on distance. Players will be able to get to you much further than you think. There are two ways to combat this. You can get off your walker, and if you press the H button, your walker will start going on its own, leaving you to freely direct or press F and clamber and get off any players attacking you, or you can unhook any of the hooks that have got onto your walker, and this will also stop any players from getting on you. Flip side of me getting owned when I was pretty inexperienced is this late game, end game. I've got used to things a little bit. Look how far this walker ends up being. And this is one of the best examples on how to hook onto a rival. Aim for the top of the wings. Keep pulling yourself in and eventually you will just find yourself up there. It is a bit glitchy, but that's the way it is at the moment. If you get that one swing in with a player not expecting it, you are pretty much going to dominate him. This guy was absolutely higher level than me. We ran all the way to these end stages with not really a lot of armor or a lot of good weapons, but I totally took him out because I got them first early stages in and he was desperate to try and maybe get his health back up before I started attacking him again. And you can't let that happen. Remember, it takes a few seconds. So you can check the health, it's on the top screen, see how much they've got and weigh up whether or not you're gonna take him out in battle. If you've taken multiple enemies down, pay attention to that little light beam. If it's blue, it means they've got a rare item. If it's green, they've got an uncommon or common item, I should say. And then if it's white, they've pretty much got just junk. If time is of the essence, you may want to remember that in case you can only loot one body before reinforcements arrive. So once you've actually got your fire walker, or the fireflies it should be called, go ahead and make sure you upgrade the storage spaces on it and of course unlock the water. You're going to need your walker to have the water abilities. This is the only way that you can travel across the other races. It doesn't matter if you've got loads of water in your inventory or if you've got loads of water in bags on your walker, the water needs to be in the special compartments on the walker before you can travel across the different servers. On the very first cradle that you start with, always head into the center of the map. By the time you've got there, you'll hopefully unlock your firefly. You've put a bunch of points into your health, as well as unlocked enough of weapons or tools and items that you'll be able to take on a bunch of these guys. This is perfect time to get that achievement or get that mission for killing 10 of them. There is absolute butt tons of loot in this area. It's a bit hard to get to because it's normally on top of quite a steep mountain, but it's definitely worth it, particularly if you're still quite low level and you want to see if you can get some items or you need lots of knowledge fragments. 
Be warned though, early stages, the Hazarakai are no joke. It may take multiple team members to take them down or you being really adept at fighting and making sure you've got full health. They've normally got between like 100 and 180 health, I do believe. So yeah, they patrol these areas pretty much a lot, but you could pretty much just run past all of them, exploring all of this wreckage and finding all of the chests and loot boxes that I mentioned earlier. It is worth sticking around the cradle a little bit, I'd say at least until you're level 15. At this point, you've maybe got yourself enough tools, enough items that you've upgraded your Firefly and you've got lots and lots of resources hidden away. Again, you can reinforce your Firefly with armor as well, but for some of that, you're gonna need resources like bone shards from the next server that you go and fight on. So probably a good time to escape and get out of here. A few pointers to note though, whatever it says on the world map in terms of water, it's usually a bit less by the time you get to the world's edge. When you're taking a look on your world map, it will show you the water supply from that area, but often by the time you get to that side, it's actually reduced by about 10. So make sure you've always got plenty of water, but you'll be surprised you might be able to get away with it by about 10 or less. A few last things to note for this start guide, your walkers are pretty durable. You can take a fair amount of damage even by plunging off the cliffs. And as I said, you can repair lots of parts of these by utilizing a repair hammer. If you want to stop other enemies from maybe following you or catching up, go ahead and take the time to destroy one of their legs. The legs often are some of the weaker points. Wings are nice, but they're optional. You don't need the wings if you want to get traveling around on your Firefly. But if you get a chance, take out an enemy's leg. It's going to take them a bit of time to replace it and obviously if you've raided their chest they may not even have enough resources to do so and you pretty much immobilize them but this has only been a starter guide really for the first cradle servers i'm going to be back with intermediate showing you how to go ham at combat and how to raid properly and also going to be showing you end game guides very soon what you can expect when you get to some of the hardest oases i hope this little tutorial guide has helped you out if it has make sure you liked it and i'll see you rat bags for another one very soon